Can a cheap lab scan really produce the same quality as an expensive lab scan? Let's find out. Today, we're talking about film scans, and more specifically, we're comparing three different types of scans to see how they stack up to one another. I sent some negatives off to three different sources. The first one being my traditional film lab, the lab that I go to personally for the majority of my work. The second one being a good friend of mine, Carl McDougall. He has a very high quality film scanner, and he very kindly said that he would take in these negatives for me and scan them for the purpose of this video. And the third being a fairly new startup film lab that uses an Epson flatbed. Now, the lab that I normally send my scans to use a high quality Noritsu scanner. Kyle uses a Nikon CoolScan and as I said, the fairly new startup lab, they use an Epson flatbed. It's something like a V600 or 700, something along that range. I'll put all of the information down in the description as to the different technical specs and everything of each scan so that you can look at that whilst you see me look at these images and compare how they came out. I sent both 120 and 35 millimeter negatives. The 120 being actually a recent video. Two videos ago, I shot some portraits and a sort of mock fashion shoot with my good friend Carmela. I'll leave a little card up the top and a link in the description. And the negatives from that, one of those rolls is what I sent to a lab. I sent a few images to Kyle and a few of the negatives also to this startup lab. And we've got some of those images to compare today. And then the 35 millimeter is actually my very first roll of film. It was shot with a Canon A1 and a 50 mil lens and was way back in December 2019, but was my very first experience with film. And I wanted to see how those images came out from the three different sources as well. Mainly to see if 120 or 35 millimeter film, whether they had different characteristics and different qualities on different scanners and if perhaps the 120 format being sort of the more premium the more expensive format whether that had a bigger difference between the price ranges and if 35 mil was sort of closer between all three of the options there were a few main differences that i wanted to look at and see if i could find anything different between the scans in these images the first one being sharpness obviously you need to have a sharp image you want to have a fairly sharp image that is not digitally sharp and sort of crunchy but it needs to at least look like it's in focus and sharpness and clarity of the image that is the first thing that i wanted to look at the second was contrast levels this is a very personal thing and is something that you can add in and take away of course in your editing of the photos but from my experience at least different scans often come back with very differing levels of contrast and i wanted to see whether that was something to do with each lab or whether it was something to do with each film scanning method be it flatbed or noritsu or the nikon or if it's just a personal preference thing Again, largely that's down to what you want your scans to look like and with a lab you can work that out. But I sort of left all the settings to default on these, didn't give them any guidance, just said scan them how you would normally scan them. And I wanna see how the levels of contrast vary between them. I also wanted to see if there was any weird color casts, anything like that, if there was perhaps different color temperature shifts, uh, if some images are slightly warmer, or slightly cooler. And then also I just wanted to see if there was any sort of odd artifacts, if some labs may remove the dust, some may not. And it's just these sort of little differences that I wanted to take a look at to then decide, A, for me, what I wanted my main source of scanning to be, but also to show it to you so you could see the differences largely between equipment and methods of scanning. And perhaps then you can go out and research and find your own lab that you wanna get your scans from. So let's jump over to the computer and we'll take a look at the scans together. Okay, so let's dive right in and take a little look at these film scans. Now, as I said, I've got some 35 millimeter scans and some 120 scans. The 120 scans are the film shoot that I did uh, a couple of videos back with my friend Carmela, and they are some of these portraits, and the 35 mil scans are from my very first roll of film. Now, the 35 mil, I will warn you, there is a little bit of an issue in that they didn't actually scan the correct ones at one of the labs that I sent it to. So the only 35 mil scan or a negative that we have all three scans for is this one here. The first three, I only have my normal lab and Kyle's uh, generous scans. I don't have the Epson flatbed, but I do have it for one of the 35 mils and for all of the 120 film, we have all three scans so let's jump straight in and take a look now all of these are completely unedited i believe i played around briefly before but um they're all set to zero back to where they were and these are the scans so this one as you can see is a 4492 by 6774 scan and it is the lab and it is a high resolution tiff that is the the, the generally the the scan that i opt to get from my normal lab 
And this was way back 6th of January 2020, as you can see, my first ever roll of film. And this, personally, I absolutely love this scan. This is just the base scan. And for me, it is a very nice image. If I zoom into 100%, there's plenty of detail in here. There's a lot of detail in these shadows, a little bit of noise, but I mean, it's just typical film noise, but you know, down in these dark shadowy areas up here, there is still plenty of detail. It adds quite a nice sort of neutral uh, color to it. It doesn't look particularly warm. It doesn't look particularly cold. I think it looks good. Um, very little really clipping. Um, it's all pretty well uh, exposed in the middle there. They have they did a good job getting the exposure correct. And I would say contrast, it looks pretty neutral. It doesn't look too contrasty, but it also could be flatter. And that was, as I said, that's with the Noritsu uh, scanner. This one then is Kyle scan. And I, obviously you can tell a big difference just from between these two, but pretty easy to grade it back to where I, the other one was. I think if we take a look, uh, so if we take a look at these two side by side, you can see here, I got the lab resolution. This one's the Kyle's. Kyle's is a slightly lower resolution, 3713 by 5569, but not completely different. There is still plenty of detail. If anything, the shadows in here, they're actually a little bit lighter. There's a little bit less contrast. So there's slightly less visible noise, but detail wise, you know, up in these trees up in here, they are very comparable, very much so equally as sharp, a lot of detail in both of these negatives. But I guess the one thing that is pretty obvious is Kyle's is a little bit cooler, which is actually not a bad thing. I don't mind it. You can see these these whites are a little bit more blue and they're a little bit brighter as well. It's obviously a little bit uh, just higher exposed in general. I mean, it's pretty easy to adjust. You know, if I brought that down sort of like that, it's almost at a similar level and just warmed it up a little bit like that. Uh, and then maybe brought the shadows down just a touch like that. Uh, the exposure probably still generally needs to come down. You know, they're, they're getting to a much closer point. They are very similar to one another and very easy to be graded. This one's cars is maybe a little bit more yellow. You can see this is a little bit more magenta, but in general, pretty easy to grade them. But out of the bat, if you didn't know much about grading or didn't know much about editing in general, you might think that you prefer one of these looks. And if you got the other look, you'd say you wouldn't go back to that lab potentially, but very easy when they're such high quality like these two are and as sharp and as clear as they are, it's very easy to grade them back to a similar point. Moving on to the next one. Uh, let's just take a look here. This is again, the, the original lab 6774 by 4492. This is a really lovely image. There is a little bit of a flare down here and up here, but I really like this image. Again, perfectly sharp, lots of detail, a really lovely neutral color that I got here from my lab, a good mix of sort of warmth and cold. And I really like it. If we compare that again now, uh, to Kyle's. Kyle's once again is a little bit more blue, which I don't mind these blues up in the sky here. I actually really like the sort of blue that we have. There's a little bit of a blue tint to the clouds, but in Kyle's scan, I really, really like that. The color of the sky up there. I think I probably would warm it up a little bit. I generally tend to just prefer and really like warm tones uh, to, to my, my scans. So I'd probably warm this up a little bit, you know, just pull it I probably end up with a final image like that, which is obviously is actually warmer than that, but that's sort of what I like. But I do really like the hue of the blue that we got up in there. And obviously you can adjust this in the hue saturation sliders and, and luminance sliders so that it was a similar blue. But again, Kyle's pretty similar. Uh, this time contrast and exposure a lot more closely matched. Um, if you look up at the histogram just up here uh, between the two, there's not a whole lot of shift. Kyle's is maybe a little bit more contrasty actually this time. You've got a little bit more down in the blacks, a little bit more in the whites. This one uh, tends to be slightly uh, closer together and there's not as much in the blacks and the whites portion. That's the, the lab scan. But Kyle's again, really lovely. Both of these, if I got either of these from a lab, I would be absolutely perfectly happy. Next one, again, much of a muchness. I'll fly through this. This is super similar. Uh, really lovely grain, really lovely detail on this one. This is uh, more of a, this is obviously a portrait shot, a little bit more of a close up of detail in the darks. Obviously there's a little bit of noise, but it's really lovely film grain. Really love that image and really love the way that it came out from the lab. Uh, again, that's with the Noritsu. Kyle's very, very similar this time. If I just bring them up, comparing them again, super, super similar this time. Very little difference down in this portion down here is maybe a little bit brighter. Down here is maybe a little bit brighter. 
uh, and in, uh, maybe just a couple sort of highlights you know it's popping off here and here a little bit brighter but very very much very similar moving on to the final 35 millimeter image this one is where we start to see a little bit of difference and this is where we actually have the first epson flatbed now this is the original lab image i really enjoy this one really like it again this is this lab is actually the lab that i still use so that's why i'm saying so much that i really enjoy these images but this is uh, a super lovely image and it's just super easy to work with especially in that tiff format carl's here again very similar um the same sort of thing as before it's slightly bluer um, and I, I would also just say with these images i said to carl edit them and or scan them how you would scan them and this is how he sort of came out with the colors um this may just be his preference. I personally would have it more like that, but again, that's purely personal preference. This is a lovely, lovely scan that Kyle did that you could work with to no end and have looking great. You could again, just warm it up, bring the exposure down slightly. You know, you can get a very, very similar image. But if we now go into the very first Epson image, this is where things get a little bit different. If I zoom into 100% here, you can see there is very little detail. And I mean, the scan, if you look up here, is 4176 by 6640. So that's actually bigger than Kyle's scan, but there is a lot less detail. Now this could very much be user error. They are a fairly new lab, and it could be that it's just with the flatbed, they weren't perfectly comfortable, and the focus was slightly off because there is very, very little detail in here. If I pull it up, next to Kyle's and zoom into 100% you can see the level of detail in here is in, is insane compared to the level of detail that you get from the Epson. Now I think maybe this was down to user error but I can't be totally sure. Also these are very very cool these images. This wall was white so it is a little bit too blue for my liking. Again you could warm it up just fine. I've also just noticed that this is slightly cropped in. I mean there's less space there than there is there i don't know if they've cropped in slightly to the negative or what but it is actually slightly smaller um uh, slightly sort of less real estate space um again you can edit this to be you know sort of where you'd want it to be um but it's for me i wouldn't use this image and i wouldn't be super happy if i got this image back with kyle's there was some flexibility I don't know again if that's user error, but so far my experience with the Epson isn't as good, obviously, as with these high, uh, high price, high quality Noritsu and uh, Nikon scans. But moving on to the 120, we're actually now going to the medium resolution from a lab. Now my normal lab had actually stopped doing black and white processing through this, this uh, the COVID pandemic. Obviously they've been super busy and have had to cut down on staff. So they haven't been doing black and white processing and scanning. So I sent it to another lab and from them, I just got medium resolution JPEGs because I wanted to see what that would be like. Now, these obviously slightly smaller size, 2510 by 2048. And the first thing that you may notice is that it is an incredibly flat image. If you look up here, obviously there's a lot up in the highlights. That's obviously all the sky just up there. If you pull that down, you see that's affecting the sky. But there isn't a whole lot else. There's some in the midtones, not a lot of shadows. It is a super flat flat image it's almost like if you do if you do much video work it's almost like a log image which we we really love to work with in video because it gives you so much dynamic range but for this it's possibly a little bit too flat and i had to pump in a lot of contrast back into the images now these are the images that i did uh, these are the scans that i did use for the video i got them done at this lab and then since sent them off to be done at other places um, but these are the images that I did use. And when I did put them in the video, I did have to really pump in quite a lot of contrast. But in terms of sharpness, you know, they're good. If we zoom into 100%, we can probably go a little bit more if we go into 200% here. You can see there's a decent amount of detail. They do leave the dust on here, which obviously is quite common with black and white film. But at 200%, there is a decent amount of detail. And if you're just uploading this to the web or to Instagram or for, for YouTube purposes like I was, perfectly fine if you're not gonna you know upload them to massive billboards or get big prints of them they're absolutely fine so moving on to kyle's scan now this one obviously you can tell there is a little bit more contrast straight away and if you look at the size he gave me tiffs and they are huge file sizes 10616 by 8493 they are some super super detailed scans you can see 200 zooms in a lot i mean 100 of this zooms in a lot more than 100% of that image because obviously it is so much bigger. 
and you do get a crazy amount of detail there's some really lovely grain and sharpness going on here you could absolutely print these scans that Carl gave me to a massive size I thank him ever so much for this but I mean look at the detail that you have in the in the jacket in here there's so much detail and also there's just a, a really lovely amount of contrast in this image if I compare it to this one if I compare it to this one you can see there's so much more contrast and it's almost a lot more usable straight out of the negative than these lab ones were now the lab ones as I said they have plenty of play I could add contrast back in and it was absolutely fine to do that but Kyle's were more ready to go but now moving on to the Epson and this one again not ideal <laughs> if I'm being totally honest there is firstly you can tell there is a bit of like a purplish hue and if I change the treatment up here to black and white that shouldn't change it should already be pretty much black and white there is a very purple hue down here and I don't totally know why that is it's not like that with any of the other scans it was only on this flatbed one uh, so I don't know why they gave me some huge file sizes again here 12 9 20 by 10 4 8 4 again in tiffs but if we compare the, the, the detail and just the sharpness, Kyle's is a slightly smaller scan than the labs, but the lab, I don't know again if they missed focus or what it was, but a little bit off, not quite as sharp, even though it was such a huge file. Now back here, you can't tell it as much, but it definitely does look pretty muddy in her face. So you, you can't make out nearly as much detail. It's quite muddy, quite just sort of compact. In here, you can see absolutely everything. It looks beautiful and sharp. Even back here at this range, it doesn't look great with the Epson. And as I said, I don't know why it wasn't in proper black and white. We'll zoom through these last ones here. This again, a lovely image, really like it. Really lovely sharpness on this, uh, the, the lab. Um, you know, if, even if comparing the lab to uh, to the, the large scan, you know, this, this scan is almost four times the size or five times the size. You get more detail in the smaller scan than you do in this one, which isn't ideal. The Epson didn't stand up to the test. Again, I don't know if that was user error, if it was these guys at the lab just hadn't quite worked out the settings. I know the lab that I did use, they have actually got a Nuritsu since. So, um, I mean, I'm not gonna name them, but they have actually got a Nuritsu since. So I'm sure they've sorted out any scanning issues, but you can see there was actually just so much less detail on, on this, even though it's so much of a bigger file size. Again, the labs, the, the medium resolution lab scan that I got was quite low in contrast. Kyle's was really lovely in contrast, super detailed. For these 120, uh, uh, the, the 120 negatives, Kyle's scans were by far the best, just absolutely blew me away. And I thank him so much again for, for providing me with those. Um, but the labs obviously were what I used for the video and the video images, I think they went down well and, and came across great. So absolutely, these images from the lab could be used perfectly well. You can see they look super sharp, but they're absolutely lovely. These were all shot with the RZ67, by the way, and the 90mm lens such a lovely combo i absolutely love these images a little bit annoying a few annoying specks of dust but i was able to get them out just fine but again kyle's just having such pleasing lovely contrast absolute i mean look at the the level of clarity in here 100 percent. and i mean her skin looks amazing as well it's one of the wonders of film um i mean skin just renders so well and so smoothly and so beautifully Kyle scans look great. Again, the Epsons, that purple hue, just quite muddy in here, not a whole lot of detail. In these areas in here, you can see there's just not a lot of detail there. Whereas in Kyle's, there's a lot more detail. Oh, when it loads. There we go. There's a lot more detail going on in there. These ones, just a bit muddy, a little bit purple. Not what you want. Obviously, you'd have to set them to black and white to edit them, which make them better. But if you're going for sort of like a vintage look, there's almost a vintage softness, almost like a vintage lens to it. But I would rather be able to shoot with a vintage lens rather than have that come through the scan. Again, the final image, the exact same. The lab one, a lovely sharpness, great resolution, just needed a little bit of contrast pumped in, but I didn't mind having that as my own step and getting a very neutral image. Kyle's looked great out of camera. This one was a little bit overexposed probably. I mean, he was in the process of moving and I gave him a lot of scanning to do, so I can't complain about anything. But again, such lovely detail. I did actually miss folks a little bit on this. That's actually a little bit clipped, which I didn't notice uh, before. That is a little bit clipped there. But uh, I mean, again, a really lovely scan. The Epson one, this one is just completely clipped pretty much. Oh, maybe it's not but uh, again it's it's black and it's slightly a purpley hue 
there's a weird level of contrast to this that hasn't been in any of the others and is slightly out of focus. So, I mean, that's all the scans. Let me know what you thought was your favorite, I guess. Kyle's for the 120, I personally loved, but the lab scans gave me uh, just plenty of resolution and flexibility to work with. And these one, uh, these 35 millimeter TIFFs that I got from the lab, I absolutely love these. And the just the level of flexibility that I had with these, being able to edit these, I absolutely loved. And that is why I use this lab going forward from now for both 35 mil and 120, unless it's black and white, at which point I sent that to the other lab. Or maybe I'll use Kyle for a little bit from now. <laughs> So that was the scans and I think it was a pretty important exercise and a vital exercise to see that you can actually get very different levels of quality and just general differences between scans depending on where you send your film to be scanned. Now I already know which one I prefer the most and my film lab that I send all my film to they have sort of built up a relationship with me so they know exactly how I want my scans to be and so going forward I'll be using them but for you watching maybe you saw a certain method that you really liked and you think I want to go down and that's the method of scanning that I want to go with. So I hope that the video was at least somewhat helpful for that. But I think most important is to decide what do you want from your scans? Do you want them to be super contrasty? Do you, is sharpness the one thing, that, like the key that you have to have in your image, no matter the level of contrast, or if there's certain color shifts, you can fix that in post, but you can't fix sharpness. Whatever it is, you need to think about what you most want from your scans and what you most value and then shop around to try and find exactly what it is that you want. Also, maybe this video showed you that you can actually scan at home. Those, the Epson flatbeds, they're not super expensive in terms of film scanning equipment compared to obviously the Noritsus or the Nikon CoolScans. So perhaps they're viable options for scanning at home. And admittedly, the results from this test aren't perfect, but I think that may have been a tiny bit of user error, but it still showed that you absolutely can get some decent results if you get that sharpness correct using a fairly cheap and inexpensive Epson flatbed. And then finally think, is there a level of contrast or, or color that, that you particularly like? That's something that you can really work out with a lab. If you send all of your film to the same lab and you build a relationship and a rapport with them, you can absolutely guide them as to how much contrast you want. Say, oh, I want this to be a fairly flat image or I want it to be super contrasty and punchy, or perhaps you prefer your images on a, on a warmer side or a colder tone to them. You can absolutely work out that relationship with your lab. And I would recommend shopping around and sending your film to different labs to try and build a relationship with a certain lab. And absolutely going forward, once you send your film to your lab, you know that your results are gonna come back with the level of contrast that you want, the color that you want to be that great starting point so that you can edit your negatives further. I hope this video was helpful in some way just to see the differences in certain scanning equipment. And I hope that I instilled in you enough the importance of building a relationship with a lab and trying to get them and trying to work with them to really get the level of imagery and the quality of imagery that you want specifically for your type of photography. Because it's, it's again, it's completely subjective. As long as your image is in focus and it's developed correctly, a lab will be able to tailor the image to how you want it to be, to be that starting point from which you can make your own personal edits. I'm gonna link some of my recommended labs below that I've personally used that I think give good results. I've got a load more videos planned, hopefully coming soon, that is gonna be both focusing on photography and film photography, but also diving a bit into the world of videography. My full-time job is as a videographer, I spend all day, every day, pretty much shooting and filming and editing videos, and it's what I do as a job, so there will be more video and videography focused um, content coming soon, but, Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to leave a like, hit that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you have a lab that you use or if you have a certain way of scanning your film that you love, let me know down below. I always love to hear from you. But that's everything for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you soon.